Hi there! In this video I'm going to show you how you can automate tasks with Zscript inside ZBrush. As you can see I have this huge wall model that is composed of different tiles made in ZBrush. And I need it to process each tile with decimation, Z-remeshing and projecting the original DynaMesh sculpt to the Z-remeshed version. But doing it manually every time was tedious, with a lot of user interaction required and waiting time for the decimation, remeshing and projection. So instead I used Zscript to automate the process. This is an example of the many tiles I have for the, the wall, and as you can see I have individual subtools for each rock. In order to speed up the process I have this example file with a few rocks only, Let's use it for testing purpose. So let me just show you the script in action, just loading the script and running it on this file. And as you can see this is the result, a new file renamed to remesh, a merge tool instead of the individual rocks and three subtools, the original dynameshed version, the decimated one and the Z-remeshed with the original details projected. Finally, I can easily export out the level 1 subdivision and do the UVs in Maya. Now I am going to show you all the manual steps I would need to take to finish this task each time. So here I have the example file. First I would need to save it with the suffix of remesh, then use the merge visible command, select the new tool, Fill the object with white to remove any color coding I add for the edges of each tile. Duplicate the subtool. Set the percentage of decimation and pre-process current. Wait for it. And this will take a while for the original files. So I would have to wait and come back to it to perform, to perform the next step. Then decimate current. Auto groups. Duplicate again and run the Z remesher with Keep Groups option enabled. Divide the subtool a few times to hold the details from the IRS sculpt. Move it to the top. Enable the visibility on the DynaMesh version. Save it before projectile since it might crash the program. This way we have some sort of backup. And finally set the projection settings and projectile. Then wait. As you can see this takes almost 20 different tasks and to do it for all the tiles would be a nightmare. With the script I can just click in a button and let it run. Let's create a new file and save it as a text file. Then we can start to write our script. But before that, if you're using Sublime Text, you can install the Zscript package that will give you the correct syntax highlighting, in other words, proper color coding. Just follow the steps you see on the screen and at the end I don't actually have the Zscript option because I already have it installed. After the quick install, just set the syntax to Zscript in the bottom right corner. So let's define a variable, the most basic code in any language. You have to set it between square brackets and write var def, just as you see on the screen. Then comma, variable name and finally the content, which in this case is a folder path where I have the, my ZBrush project file. Now let's create a button, give it a name and use the note command to print the created var variable. Save the file. Now in ZBrush load the script and you will have a button on the tutorial view. If you press it, it will print out the variable content. In this case it's not showing the backward slashes, but it will read them when we manipulate the paths and files. Creating a variable for the ZBrush project file itself. Now we're going to merge the project path and file name with the string merge command. This will print out the full path for the file. We will need a suffix variable for later, 
where we name the new file with the suffix remesh. Now the file name and file extension. Here we use first the string find command to get the dots in our file. Now in a new variable called length, we get the string length of the file, so we can use it later. Create a file name variable and using string extract we pass the file variable and finally extract from the first letter of the file name to just before the dot. So we use the entire length as an index and subtract the extension. Now for the extension we, we just use the dot as the beginning and the length variable as the end. We can test out the code in ZBrush and it's printing the file name and extension co correctly. In a new variable we will set the new file name with the remesh suffix. Hopefully it's clear so far, if not, please let me know in the comments. Now I'm going to copy part of the commands from the original file and explain you line by line. Should be pretty simple to follow. First we, op we open the original file. Then save with remesh suffix. Use the merge visible to merge all the subtools into, into a new tool. Select the newly created tool, in this case we're going to pass the index of minus 1, which is the last created tool. Then filling the tool with white, if needed. Finally duplicate the subtool. And if we run the codes, everything should be working as expected. Now the tricky part, but easy to solve. We can't really run other plugins like the Decimation Master within our script by default. This is a limitation of this script. In order to, uh, to avoid that limitation, we will use a free plugin for ZBrush that is available in the following page of ZBrush Central. After extracting it, in the README file you'll have uh, the instructions on how to use it. In our case, just paste the zsc file in your plugins folder. Let's open the sample code provided, we can modify it to our use case. So in my final script, in the top part, I have the exact same code that we wrote before, defining the variables. Then I copied from the sample code the routine to set the options for the decimation. A routine is like a function in this script. Here we just need to pass the amount of polygons in K format. So we get the points count of the subtool selected. Then we divide it by 10 since we want 10% of the decimation. We transform the output to an int value. And to get the value into K format, we divide it by a thousand. Finally, we just get it again to a non-float value. In the end, we just pass it as the decimation target polycount in the decimation settings. The next step is to copy the routine for the batch process. This is where the decimation will occur. Here I just left the default number of runs to 2, in the first run we will decimate the subtool, then continue with the script in the second run. As I said, decimate if the index is 1, and in the second run or index we will perform a few actions required. First set the polygroups with autogroups. Duplicate the subtool, run the Z remesher with keep groups on, divide the mesh four times, move the selected subtool to the top, save the file before project all, turn the visibility of the third subtool off, which is the decimated one. This might not be required. 
set the projectile settings we discussed before and finally run the projectile command. Now we just copy the remaining code from the sample to the button block. Here it is important that you name the file between quotes with the same name as your script file. Ok, let's run the script once again to test it out. And everything came out as expected. Just before signing off, I want to recommend you a few resources. First, you have this YouTube playlist from Mad Pony Interactive, which is where I got started on Zscript. Can't recommend enough. The other ones are Google for specific searches. That, that will mostly redirect you to ZBrush Central, where you can find the most resources. And this is it, hopefully you learned something new, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Take care, see you next time.